Hi, it's me again with Corel Roll Tips and Tricks. I made this exact video, well, hopefully it'll be better this time, for a gentleman across the water, I don't know where, and I made three videos. I didn't think they were that good. I told people to stop watching them. But then he asked me to take them off because the owner of the company said that was a picture from the company. I couldn't even tell what it was and I, don't, I still don't today know what it was, but it looked like a chip holder, so I made a chip holder. I made three videos. I went through all the process to get to this, and he asked me to remove them, so I did, because he asked me. So I'm going to redraw them, and I wasn't going to do them, and then today, two people have already asked me, what happened to that video? I want to try to practice. So I've made two ellipses. I'm going to hold down the control button. I'm going to take a duplicate of that ellipse and put it in the center. Matter of fact, I might be a little bit too close to the edge, so I'm going to bring it down a little bit. I brought my duplicate, not my original. We're pretty close to the center. Sometimes if you hit that indexing, well, there we go. Now, control D and make a duplicate and rotate it 90 degrees. All we're doing is putting a 104 point. Then I took the polygon tool, set on three sides, and I drew a triangle. I'm going to hit P, put it in the center of the page, and then I'm going to move it up, start moving, and then hold down the control button. Get it about right there. Control D and make a duplicate of it, and take the rotation, put it in the center. Wow, that was easy. And rotate this 45 degrees. Now, I'm going to control D and control D. I should have changed it to 90, but it's just easier to, uh, well, what we can do now is take away these that we don't need and take this one and control D, make sure the center is still on the center, and we can go uh, 225, then control D. I just added 90 to the, the other number. Now what we need to do is take and because I made the chip holder kind of round on the inside, I'm going to take that object and go to effects and contour. I'm going to contour the outside 0 0.03. I just want a little bit of an indention in there. And I could make the, either the triangle a little bit bigger or the circle a little bit bigger. And I am. I'm going to make the circle a little bit bigger. This will be kind of neat. So you need to go to object and break the contour apart. I'm going to make that circle um, 2.5. There we go. And then I can just go to my other circle and 2.5. 2.5. If you, it'd be easier to start doing it now than try to change it after the contour. So now we're ready. Now we're going to contour this there we go. That's about what we want. And then you, once you got that set, you can just change the, just go back to apply and hit all the contour. Put a, could have probably grouped together, but by the time you do that, you'll uh, be just as far along. Take everything, go up to object and break the 13 objects apart. Take away the center, basically what the chips are going to be. And... We're going to make this circle a little bit bigger by holding down the shift key. Maybe just a little bit bigger. And we're going to use the Smart Fill tool. And we're going to fill this in. Fill that in. Is that really what you want? No. It's been a couple of nights ago since I did this. Oh, here's what. Here, I'm sorry. You know what I did wrong? I didn't. I needed those chip holders. Because now I'm going to nudge. Let me nudge this out of the way. I'm going to set my nudge. Let's see how big this is. Uh, it's 11 inches. Boy, I made it bigger. Let's set our nudge factor on 12. Here, here I just missed a step. So now we're going to use the Smart Fill tool on that, nudge it out of the way. On that, nudge it out of the way. That, that, and that. Now we can nudge that, 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 and that. That's all we need. We don't need that circle. Now I'm going to left click on no fill, right click on fill. And at this time, I could have made these 
triangular is round. But the only thing I want to really keep is I want to keep this circle. I'm going to nudge it all the way twice. I don't need this anymore. And then I'm going to group this together with control G. Now, the only reason I'm going to use the extrude tool is to get this shape like perspective, like you're looking halfway down on it. So we're going to go to the extrude tool, which is underneath your drop shadow flyout. And we're going to go extrude and we're going to extrude this. Doesn't really matter how far you extrude it. Well, there we go. The only reason I'm using the extrude tool is because I want to be able to rotate it. And there's a way you can do it with numbers up here, but this is kind of fun. Get it kind of even, a little bit, a little bit more. Doesn't really matter. Maybe make the extrude not quite so far. And that's the only reason I wanted the extrude tool. Because now I can go and break the extrude apart. And I can take that first layer and look at that. Now, I really should have probably done it with the circle on it. And I, I think I will. Let's back up here. It probably would be better to have the circle on it. And then that way you'll have that circle like this circle over here. So we need to probably make it a little bit bigger than comp all that, but that's good. Now I'm going to group this together. Control G. And then go to the extrude tool and extrude it. Doesn't matter how far you extrude it. I just want to be able to rotate it. And that's too much. Too much. And too much of an angle. You can do this by numbers and everything. But that looks good. And so once again, it's really not quite even. Let's get the let's get a little bit more even. There we go. Now the only reason I used the extrude tool again was to get to this part that looks like the top. Now I can delete all this and nudge that back. <clears throat> then what you can do is take this top, control D and make a duplicate and move it down. And that I did it again. If you control D and if you will start moving it and then hold down the control button, if you move it, the control button will actually take something away. Now what I'm going to do is go and grab it all and go up to object and ungroup it. I'm going to move these circles out of the way. Now I'm going to do what I did the other night. Well, I'm going to do one more thing before I do that. I'm going to make this other part a little bit further down. See, I did the same thing again. You need to start moving it and then hold down the control button. All right, we're going to get back. See, control button did it again. Ah, see those, you see the round nodes instead of the square ones? That's because the control button's taking over. All right, now we're going to ungroup everything. And I think this is about where I quit the other night, so I'm going to quit here. Because I have found by myself learning on Corel. If you don't have time to cipher and figure everything out, you're going to lose it. And then that's why you can start over with a fresh view. So stay tuned for part two. Hope that helped. Thank you for watching.